Hello everyone. My name is Oziyama Okonkwo. I am an associate professor of medicine here at the University of Wisconsin. My lab is focused on discovering the factors that provide resilience against Alzheimer's disease. On behalf of my team, I want to say a big thank you to each one of you and your families for all that you do to help us find answers in our shared fight against AD. Your generosity and dedication gives us hope that one day in the not so distant future, we will beat this deadly disease. Thank you. Hello again, everyone. In this presentation, I am going to speak with you about some exciting findings from my lab regarding the benefits of physical exercise for the brain and for your thinking skills. This study was funded by the Alzheimer's Association and made possible by your generous involvement in our research program. In this study, middle-aged adults who had not led a physically active life in the past were randomly assigned to one of two groups. In the first group, they were simply told to maintain their usual levels of physically act physical activity, which in this case meant not being very physically active. In the second condition, they were put through a progressive regimen of physical exercise, where they go from working out about 20 minutes per day for three days a week to about 50 minutes per day for three days a week increasing their heart rate reserve from about 50% through about 80% over the course of 26 weeks. And you can see this in the picture on this slide. Because we do not have a lot of time, I am only going to take you through a handful of the findings from this study. The first one is our results from the question does increasing your physical activity also increase your aerobic capacity? That is the ability of your lungs and your heart and your skeletal muscles to do work. And the answer is a resounding yes. At the end of the 26 week period, what we see here is that those in the physical exercise group are also, co also called the enhanced physical activity group had a significant change in the levels of the VO2 peak. So VO2 is that measure of aerobic capacity. Whereas in contrast, those in the usual physical activity group did not see that much of a change between week one and week 26 of this physical exercise program. And therefore, this gives evidence again that increasing your physical activity has physiological impact on the ability of your heart, your lungs, your skeletal muscles to do work, to endure aerobic exercise. Why this is important is that aerobic capacity or VO2 peak has been shown to be a predictor of many important health-related outcomes, including the risk of death over time. VO2 peak has also been shown to play a role in decreasing the risk for Alzheimer's disease as it affects our brain and our thinking skills. On the right side are PET scans. These scans measure the ability of our brains to take up and use glucose. At the top is a PET scan from someone in the usual physical activity group. At the bottom is a PET scan for someone in the enhanced physical activity group or the exercise group. 
In this can, red color is a good thing because it indicates that the brain cells, our neurons, are taking up and using glucose effectively. As is very clear to see, the brain scan on the bottom, the one from the individual in the physical exercise group, in the enhanced physical activity group, is metabolically active. That is, this person's brain is very active in the way the neurons take up and use glucose. Whereas the individual in the usual physical activity group who really was not doing much of any physical activity does not demonstrate the same level of metabolic activity. So this suggests to us that 26 weeks of an aerobic exercise program has direct benefits for brain health. And this is important because glucose uptake is an early marker for risk for Alzheimer's disease. The next question we asked was, okay, we do see that after 26 weeks of this program, that the individuals in the enhanced physical activity group, that is the physical exercise group, that those individuals saw an increase in the VO2 peak, in the levels of aerobic capacity. We saw that in the, in the two, two slides prior, in the prior slide, sorry. The question then is, does that increase in VO2 peak have any clinical meaning? Has, does it really mean anything? And to do this, we looked at correlations between VO2 peak and levels of FDG PET uptake in the brain, and also looking at how change in VO2 peak correlates with change in a measure of executive function called the DCAF's color word interference task, which is a mouthful, I understand. And what we see here is that on the left side, we see that there is a positive association between how much change there was in a person's aerobic capacity over that 26 week period and also how much change there was in the, in the ability of their brain to take up and use glucose. And this change was significant. On the right side, we also see that there is, in this case, a negative association between change in aerobic capacity, that is VO2 peak, and the time it took individuals to complete this very challenging task of executive function. On this task of executive function, less time is a good thing because it means that the brain is able to work faster to complete the task. So what we see here is that the higher your, the, your change in aerobic capacity over the 26 week period, the less time it took you to complete this task over the course of that 26 week period. So in summation, what we have here is evidence that one, beginning a program of aerobic exercise, even if you have not been physically active in your past, has a direct benefit on increasing your VO2 peak, that is your aerobic endurance. Secondly, engaging in such a regimen of aerobic exercise also leads to positive changes in your brain's ability to take up and use glucose. And not only that, there is an association, as we see on the slide still, still up on the screen here, between the change in your levels of aerobic capacity and the change in the ability of your brain to use glucose, and also between changes in your aerobic capacity and changes in your ability to think more critically and faster on this challenging measure of executive function. To wrap up, I would like to leave you with this website. This is the National Institute on Aging's website for physical activity, and the link is up there on the screen. I encourage you to check out this website. It has a lot of very useful and helpful tips and information on how to begin 
and maintain a regimen of physical activity, even if you have not been physically active previously in your life. You can even receive online coaching that will help you to begin and maintain a program of physical activity. You would even have access to free resources such as booklets and CDs and the, and the like. But of course, as always, before you begin any program of physical activity, you would want to check with your physician to make sure that it is appropriate for you to engage in such a regimen of physical activity. To close, I would like to say a big thank you again to each one of you and your families for your involvement in these studies here in our center that allow us to find answers to this deadly disease. Thank you. Your generosity and your dedication gives us great hope.